Welcome to Morea. These are my adventures in biology on the island of the yellow lizard. My adventures on the island of Morea continue with a trip to a nearby lagoon frequented by stingrays. I'm joined by Dr. Cecile Gaspar, president of Temana o Temuana, a nonprofit conservation and research society that's based here out of the Intercontinental Resort. Chillin' with the stingrays is a popular tourist activity, and although I'm certainly a tourist here, I'm actually more interested in the biology. I was especially curious about the local populations of stingrays and how they may be affected by tour boats bringing a constant supply of food and onlookers. Dr. Gaspar had plenty of information to share with me here. In fact, she completed her PhD on this exact subject. Okay, so we have come out to a little Motu, which is a small island where we are going to see some stingrays. We're back with Dr. Cecile Gaspar. Your PhD was actually on the social patterns of the stingrays and, and, and what the tourism affects? Yes, basically we thought it was interesting to try and look how much the tourism here on the side of Moria could have an impact on the stingray population. Of course, any time that you start sort of habituating animals to yeah. getting fed, yeah. they're going to start congregating in areas where humans are. Yeah. So what did you find about the differences between natural populations and populations that are constantly fed? So there are two options. One is that it was very interesting that on Moria Island, the tourism is quite uh, regular and kind of low. So there's not, you know, 2,000 people one day. Mm. That's for sure. So they usually are not overfed. And the boat operator are very conscious that they should not feed too much. Speaking of the boat operators, I was so impressed with how much biology and ecology of the stingrays was known by our tour guide, Robert. Are they naturally predators or are they...? No, they're scavengers. They're yeah. bottom feeders, so they eat what they could find in the, in the sand in the bottom, like fishes, uh, crabs, or shells, or whatever they can eat. We call it ray feeding, but we should call it ray teasing. So because we don't really feed them, we're teasing them. Because we don't want them to be too dependent from us, so that's why uh, we just let them smell the fish, we don't really feed them. So that's One of the good things here is that it was regulated by the number of tourists. Now, I did do some comparison with some other areas, like in Cayman Islands, Yes. and over there there are big issues now. Not only the stingray, they are not scared about the propellers in the boat, so they get injured, there is some aggression between them for getting the food from the boat operators. And there is an uh, unbalance now between male and, and female. So here in Moria, it's still very good. After leaving the Motu, we head out to some deeper water where we find both stingrays and black tip sharks. Feeding regulations are strictly enforced. Robert continues his ray teasing here, but it's forbidden to give any food to the sharks. This keeps the majority of the shark population in deeper water, which keeps the local fishermen in business. The synergy between tourism, industry, and biology here on Morea is truly inspiring. There's a general agreement that the natural resources have to be kept in balance in order to keep all areas running effectively. There was just one more thing I had to ask Robert. So everybody asks, everybody asks, yes. am I going to get pierced through the heart like well, Steve Irwin? So a lot of people because it got the uh, internet, so everybody yeah. saw that uh, it's an accident. Okay, maybe they play with a wild one; they're not used to people, so that's why they will be defended. Okay, it's not an aggressive animal, so mm. most of the time, a lot of people ask us about Steve Irwin or things. Yeah, but we never had any accident. Great, good to know. Coming up. Will my ecological and biological admiration for the island of Morea be able to withstand a visit to captive dolphins? Stay tuned for the next episode to find out.